Aloha, and welcome to this week's video. I haven't posted an intro in the last couple of videos, and that's just because I've been so busy getting these seven knives put together. But they have been a ton of fun. So I'm going to be finishing off the last two. So the first one of the set in this last two is going to be this uh, tracker style knife or hunter style knife. Um, I wasn't quite sure exactly the look I was going for, and so that's what I'm doing here is I'm just scrolling through some different actual knives just to get some inspiration and idea of what I wanted. I had a general idea before I began, which is why it has the joint method that it has, but that's kind of as far as I had taken it. So I finally found a design I kind of liked, and I'm going to go with that. The design that I found that I liked kind of had like a antler handle, and so it was a curved handle, and so that, that's what I'm going with here. Now instead of using a different piece of wood for the finger guard, I'm just going to be cutting that finger guard into this same piece of coal wood. Um, I was a little bit nervous it wasn't going to be large enough, but it worked out just fine. So I went ahead and cut in the uh, joint method here. So what I'm doing here is kind of like a tongue and groove. Um, I left it a little bit wide on the swordfish bill, and I did that because if it's too tight, it kind of exerts pressure pushing the two leaves outwards, and it, the bill's really not made for that. It doesn't hold that very well. It's a, a little bit better for be just a little bit loose, and then get a good glue up so that it fills in the gaps. Um, I did drill a center hole uh, right on the top of there, and that's kind of just to get a better connection between the swordfish bill, the glue, and the wood. So I am using epoxy mixed with uh, wood shavings, coal wood shavings, and I'm doing that just so it helps hide that joint a little bit better. It'll sand down, it'll be a little bit less noticeable, and make it look like a lot cleaner of a joint. So now that I have this uh, gluing in place, I can let it sit. Uh, the reason why I used that uh, painter's tape is just so that the epoxy doesn't spill out everywhere. Uh, I let it sit for 24 hours, and now I can uh, get back to it and start working on it again. Um, it glued up really nice. It was really true, so it's, uh, straight going from the, the bill to the handle. So I have very little corrective work that I need to do on the handle, which is great. Um, so now I'm going to be cutting out the cross guard or finger guard, cross guard. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure what you would call that. I think it's a finger guard. I'm going to stick with a finger guard. Uh, but the next step here is I'm going to be grooving in where the lashing is going to go. So I probably wouldn't need to lash it just because it's a showpiece. That being said, I do like all of my pieces to be potentially functional. Um, and so I wanted a mechanical hold, and so I'm going to be lashing in where the tongue and groove connection, the joint, meets. Um, but I don't want the lashing to be able to slide around, and so I'm grooving in where that lashing needs to go. And I'm doing that before I start doing any type of shaping on the piece just because I want to be able to keep track of where that's at and it'll prevent me from making any mistakes or errors. I'll be doing that again with where I'm going to be putting the shark teeth. So there's going to be shark teeth on this piece as well. Um, the handle I decided, or rather the finger guard, I decided to do, uh, or at least at this point in time I hadn't figured out what exactly I wanted to do, but what I ended up deciding was to do a crossover. So the front side of the finger guard is going to connect to the back side of the thumb rest. So the top section would be a thumb rest. Um, but that's kind of what I decided. As of this point in time, I was still kind of debating. Um, I ended up going with that style. I've done it before on some of my other pieces, and so I, I thought it would be a good idea here. Before I get to that, though, I'm just going to continue shaping in the rest of this handle. Again, I kind of took inspiration from like deer antler handles where it's like a curved handle, but the end of the handle I'm using more of a Hawaiian style where it comes to a diamond. I thought that would look pretty neat. Now that I've got it mostly shaped down, I'm going to go ahead and grind in the section where the teeth are going to go. I'm being very careful not to grind too far as well as to make that nice and clean, and then I'm going to finish it up with the file here. The reason why I'm putting this into place now, even though I'm not going to be putting in the teeth yet, is the same reason for the lashing. I want to be able to keep track of where this section on the blade is, because I am going to be sharpening, kind of. You can only sharpen the swordfish bill so much. <laughs> but I am going to be sharpening both 
the front edge and the back edge so it won't have a false edge. So some, oftentimes on knives like these you'll have a false edge on the back end. I'm actually going to have it be double edged. Um, and so I'm putting in the groove so I can keep track of how far back to take that edge and not take it back too far. But at this point in time, it's looking pretty awesome already. I am really loving this piece. It feels really good in the hand. Um, <laughs> this, I know every piece has been, I, I say it's my favorite, <laughs> but I definitely love each piece. Uh, they, they're just so much fun to work on. This specific style I haven't done before, where it kind of looks like this tracker or hunter style knife. And so it was a new challenge, a little bit more difficult but it's really enjoyable to work on. Um, I have it pretty much mostly shaped, so I'm not going to be using the angle grinder very much anymore. Now I'm going to be working primarily with uh, the chisels, disc sander, and hand sanding, as well as some file work. What I'm doing there is, is connecting, just drawing in a guide where the finger guard and the thumb rest are gonna connect. And then I'll go in and, and use the chisels to kind of clean that up and make that edge work a little bit cleaner. Um, I'm not going to be doing too much work with the chisels. It's really just to clean it up and get the shape a little bit more true. Uh, once I get this into a good point, I'll be using the files and hand sanding to really get everything into place, match everything up, and, and make it look finished and complete. Um, cleaning up these edges just make it a lot easier to do that as well as it actually makes it easier to sand as well because I can see where I need have left to sand and, and what sections I need to work down and um, so it helps out quite a bit. Um, I'm not going to be finishing it with the chisel just because um, some of the areas I want to more smoothly lead into for, uh, transition from the handle to the swordfish bill and so it's a little bit harder to do that with the chisel you kind of have those chisel marks which do look really cool. I actually like the chisel marks a lot, kind of that hand-shaped feel to it. But for this piece, and for pretty much all the pieces I've been making, I really want it to have really nice, smooth, clean, sanded, uh, filed down edges. And so that's, that's what I'm doing here. Um, the finger guard ended up being kind of like the perfect length. I, th I think if it was any longer, it would look out of proportion. And so I got really lucky with this piece of coal wood. It just worked out really well. Um, what's funny about that is oftentimes luck <laughs> and accidents tend to make for the best parts of your piece. You, you plan it out, but uh, you just can't plan for everything. A uh, perfect example is this. Um, the, I found a, a hole or cavity in the swordfish bill. I was working on the blade, and so I needed to go back and fill that with some clear epoxy let that sit overnight just so it cures hard enough that I can start to work on it. As time goes on, it'll cure harder and harder. I just need it hard enough so that I can continue shaping and sanding and working on the piece without needing too much of a delay. And then from here, it's just a lot of back and forth. Um, I'm gonna be sanding it down to 220, and then I'm gonna be cutting in the groove for the teeth, and then I'll sand it down to 320, and then I'll put in the teeth, and then I'll send it down to 320 again. So obviously I'm not gonna include all of that in the video because it's kind of boring and it's the same steps over and over. Uh, but my general process flow is I go from 120 to 220 to 320 and that's uh, grit. So the lower the grit, the coarser the sandpaper, the higher the grit, the finer the sandpaper. Uh, normally speaking, you wanna go in stages and the primary reason for that is um, if you go, usually if you're working with a really hard material like metal or something and you skip grits, you'll get the larger grits sand it down, but they leave kind of deep residue grooves. And then the finer grits make those grooves smaller and smaller and smaller until you have a nice flat surface. So if you jump grits too large, it'll just take you years to sand out those larger grooves. <laughs> so genuinely you don't wanna do that, but with the coal wood, it's soft enough that I can jump, jump from 120 to 220, and it usually isn't a problem. Um, and so I, that's just kind of how I started doing that. And then I'm cutting in this groove with a tungsten carbide bit. Uh, I'm using a thin bit uh, just because I wanted to make sure I didn't jump, and that way I got a nice, clean, deep groove. And then I'm going to be filling this groove with quite a bit more epoxy than I normally do. Usually I use just enough epoxy to hold the teeth in place. 
so that it makes it easier for me to tap holes in the teeth and lash them into place. But for this piece, I'm actually not going to be lashing the teeth. Uh, I thought it would look a little bit cooler, a little bit more fluid if I didn't lash them. And so I'm using quite a bit more epoxy, but I wanted to be careful not to get any spillover, just so it'd be easier to sand down afterwards and keep the piece looking nice and clean. So I let that sit for 24 hours, and I'm back at it again. The teeth are holding in pretty solid. I want to be careful with them as of this point. The epoxy has definitely cured, but it's going to take probably a few more days before it really locks in. But as, as of this point in time, I can finish sanding it down to 320 and getting it ready to oil. Um, the last step here is a lot of back and forth between hand sanding and disc sanding, making sure I've got out all of the scratches. All my lines are looking nice and clean. The blade is lining up with the handle. Um, so just a lot of back and forth. But once I get that sanded down to 320, I can now prep it and get it ready to oil. And man, is this thing looking just awesome. I, I just, I love how this is looking. Um, I almost debated not lashing it just because I liked the way that that tongue and groove joint looked. But I, I really want the mechanical advantage that the lashing is going to give over just the basic uh, epoxy joint connection there. So I'm going to go ahead and oil this up with tongue oil. Tongue oil is what I use for pretty much all of my pieces. Um, I really like the way that tongue oil looks. Um, it just gives it kind of a warm look to it, and it really brings out the natural grain of the wood. The only downside with tongue oil is it can, and it does tend to darken the wood. So lighter grains will get darker, darker grains will get even darker. You don't notice as much on the darker grains, but you really notice it on the lighter grain. But when it's wet like this, it's actually a lot darker than it is when it's dry. And so those contrasting colors will really stick out once the tongue oil sets and dries. And then I'll go ahead and coat it with a final clear coat enamel. But here is the finished oiled piece. Uh, the last two steps here are going to be lashing in uh, where the joint is between the, the swordfish bill and the handle. And then the final step will be uh, putting on a, a final clear coat. But this is looking just awesome. I love how it's looking. <laughs> I mean, it even as is, it looks pretty awesome. The, the joint looks really clean. Um, the way that it flows, the shark teeth, bull shark teeth on the back look awesome. The entire piece is just looking super cool. Definitely a very unique piece um, and in my list of favorites. <laughs> So the lashing I'm doing here is a, a very simple lashing. Uh, you can see that pigtail I have out at the top. So I'm going over, under, over, under, and that kind of helps lock in this first section. And then I'll cut off the rest of that pigtail, do a basic lash, and then occasionally put in a simple knot. Uh, I'm doing that so that in the event that the lashing starts to get worn off or a section of it gets cut, the entire piece won't unravel. It'll still hold. Again, this piece is really meant to be a showpiece, but um, how I make all of my pieces is I do like them to be potentially functional. Um, and so this lashing here is a nice, tight, really solid lash, um, and it's definitely going to hold that uh, bill into place on that joint. And then the final step here in this is I'm just going to be wrapping and, and knotting in on one of the previous wraps. Um, and then cutting it off and tucking in the pigtail underneath the piece to give it a, a finished look. And so once I've now that I've gotten that piece finished, I'm going to go ahead and start work on the last piece. So this piece I've been super excited to start with just because I've always thought it would look cool. But this is based off of the Roman Gladius. Um, the Roman Gladius is a fairly simple design, um, very effective, but very simple. And so I, I knew this piece wouldn't take too long, or at least I didn't think it would take too long. Um, but I was very excited to make it just because it's been a, a long time dream of mine is to make a, a version of the Roman Gladius using a swordfish bill. Again, the handle is a koa wood, Hawaiian koa wood. I chose a darker piece of koa for the handle. I thought it would kind of contrast better for this style of piece. Um, and it does have some nice figure and, and characteristic to it, so it's actually a really cool piece of coal wood. 
Uh, it just was thick enough that I thought I could make a good pummel out of it and um, guard. Now, the all I'm doing here is kind of truing it up. So this is kind of an awkward shaped piece of coal wood. And so I, I put in, I just picked one edge, made that my guide, got a good 90 degree line, and then squared everything off of that. That way I know I'm going to have a fairly straight piece compared to the swordfish bill. So the first step, now that I've cut that out on the bandsaw, or at least rough cut it out, is I'm just barely doing some notching on the swordfish bill, and then I'm going to be marking the swordfish bill onto the top of this handle here so that I can start cutting in the inset of where that swordfish bill is going to go into. So for the most part, almost the entire swordfish bill is going to inset into the handle. So it's actually going to be a pretty solid handle. Um, I just want to make sure I have it in the, a good angle. It is natural material, and I'm not altering it all that much, which means it's not perfectly straight. It's not perfectly, both sides aren't the same width. And so I do have to be careful. Um, the process that I'm doing here is I just drilled out a whole bunch of holes pretty much to depth, and then I'm going to be taking my chisel and cleaning it up, and then there'll be a ton of back and forth between checking to see how it looks with the swordfish bill and how it looks on the wood. Um, I spent probably a good two hours doing that um, just because I wanted it to be nice and tight, so I went really slow. Uh, I did leave a little bit of room, and that ended up working out perfect. The reason why is because now when I go to set the bill, I can kind of make sure that it's straight along with the, the handle material, and that reduces the amount of corrective uh, shaping I have to do on the handle material. I can just straight work on making it look cool. <laughs> and so uh, I'm going to be mixing in some wood shavings with the epoxy. Uh, I'm doing that just so that any gaps get filled in with that darker looking epoxy that will really blend in with the handle material and make it look quite a bit better. Now this is going to be, I am going to put a cross peg into it, but for the time being it's just going in straight as a almost like a, a, a mortise and tenon joint. Um, I guess it would be a mortise and tenon joint, but it, it's really just inset into the piece and then I'm, I'm gluing it there. And then I let that sit for a day and now I can start shaping, general shaping on the piece. Um, the handle design is going to have just horizontal grooves that wrap all the way around and then the handle itself is going to be have straight edges. Um, it is going to be thinned down, but I wanted kind of more of sharp ridges, uh, not sharp as in they come to a point, but sharp as in you've got a clean edge that you can really watch. Um, and then it's going to be separated by these grooves, and that'll add to the grip, so you'll really be able to hold on to it. And then the grooves will also help in reducing the weight of the handle, so I can get a better balance between the swordfish bill and the handle material. So here I marked in a quarter inch hole and went ahead and drilled that in. And then I'm going to grab a quarter inch dowel, a wooden dowel, and use that as a peg and glue that into place. Normally at this point, I would wait for probably a day for that to set. But the uh, bill is already pretty solidly in place with the epoxy. And so the peg isn't adding any additional stability with regards to that. It's really just making it so that you can't pull the swordfish out. The, the bill just won't, you, you won't be able to pull it out without damaging something. Um, and so because of that, I only let it sit for about an hour, and then I came back to it and started immediately shaping. Um, what, <laughs> what I'm doing with this is I needed to bring down the handle material quite a bit, and it was going really slow with my chisels because it's a harder, denser coal wood. Um, with the file, it was kind of going slow because the file is a finer grit. And so I got my saw here, and this is more of a, a joining saw, and I used this to cut in those edges, and then that way I could take my angle grinder and very carefully grind up to where I cut and still have a very clean edge between the pummel section and the handle section, and that actually worked out really well. So now that I have that mostly shaped, I can start working on the blade. Um, this was a pretty nice swordfish bill, actually. It was very solid. It had almost zero to no uh, cavities, 
and so it, it was able to shape down and, and sharpen down without really needing to add any epoxy to it, which was awesome. So now I'm going to the handle, and I ended up struggling a little bit with those grooves. I wasn't quite sure how I wanted to handle them. Um, I started to sand them down, wrapping sanding discs around my files, but it just wasn't giving me the look I was looking for. And so what I ended up doing is going over and grabbing these uh, sanding discs. I guess they're not discs, they're more like sanding tubes. <laughs> but they're for the Dremel specifically. I don't really use them just because they leave a, a very large gap. But for this piece specifically, I kind of wanted that larger gap. And so it worked out perfect. Um, you just have to go kind of slow at a slower RPM. If you go too fast, if, you, if the RPMs is too high, it's spinning too fast, it's too easy to burn the material. And so I just go out at a slower rate and just slowly work from the thicker, heavier grits to the finer grits. I actually don't know what these grits are. They're not labeled. I just know that some of them were heavy grit, like a very coarse, and some were fine grit, you know, a lot smoother. So I just worked my way <laughs> through them one at a time and, and, and sanded this down. I will be finishing the sanding with my hand sanding, but I'm getting it... I think the finer grit on these is probably around 120, which uh, removes pretty much all of the large scratches. And so I, for the, from there, I should be able to sand it down pretty easily with a 220 and a 320, um, just hand sanding. And so the next step here is just going to be sanding, lots and lots of sanding. <laughs> uh, sanding with some corrective uh, back and forth. Um, while I was working on it, I was kind of not overly pleased with how the pummel was looking. It just looked too bland. And so I wanted a little bit more contrast in the piece. And so I decided to put in some inlay Mother of Pearl. Now this is white and gold Mother of Pearl. And they're just uh, shell chunks, so I have to shape them down. And so I'm using a one inch bit here, and that's just going to cut in, and then I used a one inch design, and then I ground down that shape to match that bit. That way I have a very clean edge. You just have to go really slow as you're grinding it down to make sure that you have a nice, true, good fit. Otherwise you can get some big gaps, and I wanted to avoid as much gapping as I could. And then once I got it to a nice snug fit, I went ahead and just got my super glue and just pounded it into place. <laughs> now the super glue is just fine for what I'm going to be doing here, um, primarily because the there's not going to be any stress against those inlays. And then I'm going to be oiling the piece, and when I do that, it's going to cause the wood grains to expand, and that's going to lock in the inlay pearl even more. And so. The, the super glue is really all I need. I mean, there's no way that that, that pearl inlay is going to fall out. Um, it's in there pretty snug. And so next step, or really the last step that I'm going to be working on before I go to oiling this piece is just going to be sanding. So I sanded it all the way down to 320, and I'm going to skip all of that because it's nice and boring. <laughs> and we're just going to jump straight to oiling. Uh, I was really excited to oil this piece. I mean, I'm excited to oil every piece I make, but the contrast between the white mother of pearl, the coal wood, the swordfish bill, I really love that. Um, and and the, the coal wood here actually had quite a bit of character. There was a little piece of ed edge wood that just happened to be on the pummel section. There was a little bit of figure, a little bit of curl. Um, and then when you mix in the swordfish bill, Everything just looked awesome. Like I was just in love with the way that this piece looked. So here is the finished oiled piece. So it's not quite done yet. I still need a final clear coat once this dries. But man, is that looking just awesome. I mean, look at that. So there's a little bit of curl, a little bit of figure. Just an absolutely gorgeous piece. I love it. So I'm going to let this sit, put it on a final coat, and now we'll have the final final piece so here is the finished roman gladius <laughs> man does that look awesome and now this is inside of my shop i'm obviously going to go outside and, and get it in the natural light but in the shop you can you can see some of those characters a little bit better just because it's kind of bright outside 
And then here is the hunter or tracker's knife, also swordfish bill and cool wood and then uh, bull shark teeth. This thing worked out awesome. I loved it. So here is the piece outside of the natural light. Man, is it looking just beautiful. Look at that. <laughs> just absolutely gorgeous. Love the contrast. Love the pearl inlay. It's a very simple piece, but man, does it look awesome. And it feels really good in the hand. The balance point was right behind those peg, so almost right at the hilt. And so it just feels really smooth and fluid. If it was a sharp, like a, a metal blade, man, you'd be able to index with it very easily. Um, it'd be really fun to test with. I probably wouldn't test this with slashing just because it is a swordfish bill. I'd probably test with it just um, stabbing. Um, I won't be testing with this piece um, just because I'm worn out. <laughs> Man, getting all seven of these done was, was a task. So here is the final piece. Uh, I guess technically the gladius was the final piece, but um, uh, this is the hunter or tracker's knife. Again, looking absolutely gorgeous. I just love the way that it turned out. I love the overall aesthetic, the look, the feel in my hand, the, the contrast between the, the two-tone koa and the swordfish bill. Absolutely gorgeous piece. Well, I hope you enjoyed these uh, videos. This is the last two of seven. If you're interested in them, if you're interested in potentially purchasing one, I am going to be putting all seven of them up for sale on my Instagram. And that is going to be starting tomorrow or the 5th. I guess if you're watching the video, tomorrow could be any time. <laughs> So that's going to be September 5th, 2022. They're going to be post up for sale. Well, thank you, everyone, for watching. If you liked it, leave a comment, and like, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Aloha.